In order to mark and identify parts, either with a brand name or maybe a serial number, you have to do some kind of marking. And most common is gonna be a laser marking. It's relatively new technology, at least in terms of watchmaking, but it's much more efficient than having to do hand engraving. Hand engraving is much more of a, an artisanal skill that is developed over many years. And it's really an art form and profession all separate and alone. So for a watchmaker, they would typically send out a part to be hand engraved. But now with the accessibility of things like fiber lasers, we can actually have our own laser marking right inside of the watchmaker's workshop. We don't have to send parts all over the country or potentially to another part of the world in order to have them engraved. It can be done right next to the same equipment that we make the part on. I use a 20 watt fiber laser and it's a relatively compact piece of machinery. Easy to use, not inexpensive. However, it is much less expensive than sending parts out for laser marking elsewhere. And it is significantly less expensive than sending parts out for hand engraving. As an example, hand engraving a serial number with four digits onto the back of a stainless steel wristwatch would take hours. Using a fiber laser, it takes a matter of seconds. So it's two very different methods for marking a piece of metal, and it allows a lower cost of production, faster turnaround, and these are all things that are really great when we're trying to make uh, a different watch component or a complete watch and do it within a certain budget, right? If we're trying to make a relatively accessible timepiece as best we can, then things like lasers are very helpful. Something like a fiber laser could also be used to cut metal. In the case of an oscillating weight, we could actually carve a logo all the way through the oscillating weight, cutting the material away. The way a fiber laser works is you're simply eroding the material at the surface, and the longer you keep the laser on, the more heat you're generating. So you have dwell, because the laser can actually move across a part. The longer it stays in one position, the more heat it creates, and the more cutting it does. So coming up with just the right settings for the material you're trying to cut, the depth you're trying to cut, and also the style of cutting. You can have dark marks that leave almost like a, what looks like a burn or blackened material at the surface. You can also have marks that don't actually remove any metal. Marks that simply bring carbon to the front surface. So you'll have a black mark, but there's no depth, no removal of material. You can also do things like frosting, and frosting will create a texture that is light colored. So instead of having any apparent burn marks, you can have a very clean etched surface at any depth. It all depends on the power of your laser and the optical elements that you're using to focus that laser and move it across a surface. The equipment I use is from a company called Meco, and they're here in the United States. And one of the reasons I selected a Meco laser is that they provide lifetime 
engineering assistance. So if I have a new material that I've never cut or marked, I can actually call them or email them and they will help me set it up with exactly the right settings for the perfect mark, exactly as I want it to be. And that's for the lifetime of the laser. So since this was my first experience cutting with lasers and marking parts with lasers, I wanted to make sure that there was a team of engineers who knew what they were doing that could help me out because it's not always intuitive, the settings of the laser, right? The power settings, the timing settings, uh, how many different cuts you want to make in order to get to a certain depth. Then you change your material. And when you start dealing with different metals, the way they react to a laser is different. So that's really where the complexity begins. Most watches on the market today will have at least one component that has been marked with a laser. If you look at some watch dials, they will have textures that are added by laser. Many movement parts will actually have decorations added using lasers. Things like Geneva stripes can be added using lasers instead of an abrasive pad. What this does is it actually speeds up the process. It looks slightly different, but it's almost identical unless you're the well-trained watchmaker who has seen both stripes up close, it will look the same, but one will be achieved much quicker with much less skill necessary. The other one will take more time, more equipment and setup, and a lot more practice and skill to perfect. In the end, you have a relatively similar decoration. So many of the higher volume watch movements, they will be decorated with lasers. And these lasers can actually be integrated right into a CNC machine. Now, one thing to remember when working with lasers is the frequency of the light. We have special glass that shields that light with a special glass door. You can have lasers that operate outside of an enclosed system like that. However, you then have to make sure that everyone in that room is wearing special glasses. And those special glasses could become cumbersome in an environment like this, where I wanna be working on watches, using my loop. So instead we put the laser into a contained system to keep any of that light within that box so that it's not escaping and possibly damaging people's eyes outside of that. A fiber laser is very good for cutting and marking metal. However, in order to mark wood, you need a different laser. A fiber laser will set the wood on fire. So the only thing that we're not marking with this is a wooden box. That's done on a different setup with a different laser, someone who's specializing in marking wooden products. But as far as metal goes, we're able to mark titanium, stainless steel, gold, platinum, brass, carbon steel, almost anything that we work with here, we can mark. I use the laser to mark watch bridges, main plates. I also use it for logos on crowns, logos on buckles, and serial numbers on case backs. And in the past, I have used it to cut oscillating weights into the exact shape that I want them. I have also used it to make applied numerals by actually using the material that I cut out. If you take a close look at any modern wristwatch, you're gonna see deep engravings or markings that have sharp corners, things that couldn't possibly be made with an end mill. And this is because of laser marking. Laser marking has become the standard way of engraving a wristwatch.